Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about discrete dynamics. Um, so if you have read the book, this is from the third chapter of the book. Also in, in today's lecture, I will talk a little bit about GPIO because you will be using GPIOs in, in the first lab. And the end of this um, lecture, I will talk a little bit more about lab one. Uh, although I expect that we will have um, further discussion next week regarding lab one. Let's start with the discrete systems. So discrete uh, is the opposite of continuous. Uh, in chapter two of the book, uh, it talks about continuous dynamics, uh, which I skipped um, because we're not gonna touch upon that uh, in our um, course. Um, discrete is to you know, represent the concept of uh, separate and distinct um, events or inputs, which are not continuous. A discrete system is one that operates in a sequence of uh, discrete steps uh, or has signals taking discrete values. Uh, you will see a lot of examples of uh, such discrete systems. Uh, anything that in you know, talking about on off uh, or uh, with certain values, um, taking different value at different time point, uh, those are discrete systems. And lab one, the traffic controller we're going to build is a um, you know, representative example of discrete system uh, where the state of the system changes you know, from one to another um, if you consider those lights as one of the states uh, that you are uh, looking at. And also, you know, we're going to talk about the states and uh, uh, of, uh, part of the discrete system um, and the um, discrete systems uh, are said to be, have this discrete dynamics. So the changings of the signals and the states are all uh, distinct, um, individually separatable uh, in terms of the time. Whereas uh, continuous dynamics, uh, it is, you know, uh, the values change along with the time. There's no, uh, um, individually separable um, values. We're gonna be talking about models uh, and uh, in particular, we're gonna be talking about the state machines, how we model the discrete dynamics using state machines. Those state machines will be uh, you know, easily mapped to programs. Uh, so that's why we wanna start with these models and because they can be uh, later translated into uh, programs, um, regardless of what programming language you decide to use. Uh, we're going to be looking at the um, actor models of discrete systems, uh, the types and their interfaces. And we're going to spend um, a lot more time on the uh, states, transitions, and guards, and how we uh, describe uh, the uh, same machines as a part of the discrete systems. Uh, we'll look at determinism and uh, receptiveness, uh, very important concepts uh, in discrete dynamics. So let's start with a concrete example. Uh, let's uh, see if we have a garage, like a public garage. So you have cars going into the garage and uh, cars coming out of the garage uh, at any time. So what we want to do here is to um, you know, looking at the, um, the whole system, be able to show uh, the number of cars or number of um, uh, available parking uh, spots uh, in this garage. Uh, let's say for this particular example, we want to count the number of cars that are currently in the parking garage. And in order to do that, of course, we need to have uh, some sensors to sense the cars enter uh, and leave the garage. And we want to show this count uh, in, um, you know, in some sort of display. Um, so what we ha can have here is such a discrete system. So 
what we see here are several components. Uh, we have a, a arrival detector. Um, so it's um, some sort of a sensor, could be light sensor, could be mechanics, um, you know, nature. Um, the arrival detector will be able to um, generate some signal to indicate the arrival of a car and then send that signal to a uh, counter uh, actor. Uh, so this here, this uh, um, box here is a, uh, we call it actor. Um, and then this actor takes a, a input. Uh, this port is uh, called up. So you can think about this as a wire that going into this logic. And uh, likewise, we have a departure detector and it will detect the departure of cars and for that signal, it's connected to the other port of this counter uh, actor. And so, and we named these um, two ports as up and down respectively. And this output of the counter is uh, the number of cars in a garage. So this count value here. And this value will be displayed uh, in a you know, LCD display uh, or seven segment. So it's very simple, uh, but what we see here, uh, several important uh, uh, elements. Uh, we call these uh, actors, uh, arrival detector, departure detector, and counter. And we see those uh, signals, arrival, departure, and these up and down, those are the, the ports uh, going into some of the actors. And also uh, the actors, uh, the counter actor has an output. Um, this displays or output the number of cars currently in a garage, and that's going to be sent to a display. So, uh, more concretely, we have these definitions. Uh, so we see this uh, up. Um, this is a um, a function. Uh, you can think about this as a mapping from time uh, to a, a set of two values. Um, this two values are uh, absent and present. So which is to say that, you know, for certain time, there might be no signals, which is an indication of um, there's no car arrival. And if there's a car coming into the garage and this detector detects that, it will generate such a, a signal. And uh, so this wire here will, um, will say, okay, present. So that's this, this uh, arrival signal uh, takes uh, this present as its current value at time t. And Likewise, uh, the departure detector will do the same thing. If there's a car leaving the garage, then it will generate a, a signal as, as, as say present. Um, and then that's gonna be uh, sent into this counter. So that's how we um, define these uh, signals. And these are, we call it pure signals because these signals, they do not take uh, any other values um, you know, other than absent or present. Present is only when the, the signal is indeed um, present. If you think about uh, electronic designs, you can think about this as a, a, a rising edge of the, um, of the uh, sensor output. Uh, and then if you know, there's no um, car's arrival, then this in essentially the voltage output will be a zero. So that's absent. Um, also, the departure uh, signal is the you know takes a similar um, form. Um, so the discrete actor, this counter, um, is how we define um, the the operations of this system. Uh, essentially, what we are looking at here is. Um, Let's say we have um, a set of um, signals. 
uh, or signal uh, or inputs to this counter. And this up and down are the two inputs and we name them up and down. You can name them differently, but now we have two uh, inputs to this counter actor. So what we are defining here is a uh, discrete uh, actor that's called a counter. And um, the input of these counters uh, are these um, um, P, uh, number of, uh, so P is the number of inputs. So we have uh, P inputs. Each one of these can take values as absent or present. Okay, this is what we, uh, how we define these uh, input ports. So at time t, think about this R as the real time values as a time t. So at a time t, uh, this port can take values as absent or present. And then this counter actor will have this mapping. Uh, essentially, it's a function if we have such a uh, combination of input, uh, either as absent or present, what will be the output uh, from this counter? So this part is to define the output of this counter actor. Now, this counter actor takes uh, certain values that is either absent or it's going to be an integer value here. So let's you know look back this example. Uh, if we have such a system de designed, and if we have a up this signal at present, that means a car just arrived. So the counter uh, will output a number, and of course we expect the number to be accumulated. So you will have you know, from zero you have one, two three and four. But let's ignore how we implement that. Um, regardless how you implement internally, the output of this counter is going to be an integer value. And that value is um, going to be sent out to, onto this output uh, port whenever there is a signal present, either up or down. So that's why you see this output uh, of the um, discrete actor uh, has this value, absent, or uh, integer. Now, can you tell me when this uh, absent is going to be output from the counter? Well, I think I, I, I should ask differently. Now, when you have um, the either the up uh, port or down port uh, see a signal present, then you're gonna be changing the value of the count and then output that. But if there's no such um, signals, because the signals could be absent, so that means you know at this time, sorry, let me go backward here. So at this time, there's no car coming into the garage or going out of the garage. So both up and down ports have value absent. So this is a time that the counter will uh, output absent, which is essentially saying that it will not output any value here. So the signal here is gonna be a, you know, nothing. Um, this is not intuitive. Um, because you might think that no matter when you have cars arrival or departure or not, you want to have this number displayed. We can do that, of course. And, um, but this design here, when we define this as the um, output signal, output value on the port, output port of the counteractor, uh, what we are saying is uh, it's possible that there's uh, no uh, value uh, present on the output port. And that's when we have no um, pure signal inputs to the input port. Okay, so this is a uh, demonstration of how this um, garage car counter um, system works. Uh, I don't have the software. 
uh, this um, let me software. Uh, this software basically, you know, you can draw these designs, um, these uh, discrete systems using the actor boxes, using uh, the signals and ports, and you can uh, give them random inputs. So you can see how uh, the uh, system behaves. So you can uh, connect the output of the counter actor to a plotter, uh, and then you can see how uh, the number of cars uh, changes from time to time. Um, there are some issues, if, if you notice here. Um, these are fine, but at some point, uh, the values go to negative. Of course, you can't have a, you know, negative cars uh, in the garage. So that's one of the uh, issues with this um, current design. Uh, it does not consider uh, some of the situations properly. Um, you can use different modeling languages and frameworks to um, describe the design we presented uh, in the previous two slides. Um, these are all possible LabVIEW Simulink uh, and also the author of the book has their uh, own software uh, framework. Um, in the previous slide. Uh, so you can uh, create such diagrams, uh, describe your uh, discrete system, and then you can give the inputs random signals and see how the system behave. Um, this is very useful when you just start with a design. Remember we emphasize that model-based design. So it'll be very useful you um, describe your models in such a framework and um, see how your system behave under different situations and then observe you know, if anything, uh, if it, any, everything works as expected or if there's anything that uh, you know, behave uh, uh, incorrectly or not as expected. And, and then we can go in, go back to look at the model Okay, um, we're gonna then talk about um, a concept about uh, reaction and transition. Um, so as we said, uh, for any time um, interval T, uh, time point T, uh, when the uh, up pure signal as we defined, so remember up is defined as pure signal, so uh, it's either uh, absent or present. Uh, similarly, down uh, is another pure signal. Uh, it takes value either absent or present. So what we're here saying here is, if we define these two signals as pure signals, then we will say when the counteractor reacts. Reacts is um, is a word that we use in this chapter and also throughout the book. Uh, you can think about is, you know, that's the moment the counter will, will make uh, transitions, will update itself or make uh, any decisions in terms of how the system should behave. So it's important to understand uh, when uh, the signal will cause the counter actor or any actor to react. Uh, if there's no uh, such conditions that make the counter react, the counter or whatever actor will stay uh, the same. So in this case, what we're saying here is, um, if up um, this signal is present uh, or down signal is present, uh, it will re re react because the up and down only takes two values to possibly absent and present. Uh, when the counter reacts, uh, what you expect in this case is that it will produce an output value in integer range and also change its internal state. So this is the first time we uh, define the state, which is the condition of the system at a particular point of time. So a system may have many different states. State 
uh, one state is just the condition of the system at that particular point of time. It could be accumulation of the effects from a long time ago. Uh, so this state A may be depend on, you know, um, you know, coming all the way from state zero. But the state A at this point is to describe the condition of the system at this point of time. Um, a state encodes everything about the past that influences the system reaction to the current input. So that's what we uh, just said. Um, Okay, so we want to um, also define uh, inputs and outputs. The inputs are um, a set, um, and the set, you know, you can think about the um, those, um, you know, whatever input ports or input signals that we use to uh, drive the actor. Uh, in our case, we have up and down and their values are uh, a two value set, absent or present. And the outputs are also in a set. Uh, in our case, the output is the number of cars, the count. And uh, it's gonna be a union of this absent um, with the integer number. Okay. Um, and this is true for, um, every time moment. So we looked at that, this example. Uh, we have arrival detector, departure detector, and we have uh, two pure signals up and down uh, as input to the counter. And the counter actor uh, outputs a, a, you know, a count uh, as the output and output uh, takes uh, either absent or uh, integer value. Um, so the question here is, what are the scenarios that this um, de design, uh, this interface design does not handle well? Can anyone tell me that? Okay, very good. Yeah, so uh, that's a, a, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that's a problem. Uh, this uh, system uh, may um, produce uh, because uh, it does not really uh, capture all the um, conditions, uh, boundary conditions. And uh, so we'll have to um, improve the design in some way. So to address that problem, uh, an easy solution here is we need to define a, um, you, know, a you know, the uh, state space and uh, specifically because it's a parking garage, so it has its capacity. And let's say the, the maximum number of cars the garage can uh, keep will be uh, this capital M. Uh, so the garage has a finite number of M spaces. And so the state space for the counter will be this uh, set uh, uh, of size M plus one. Uh, what this indicating is that uh, we will have possibly zero cars, one car or two car and up to uh, M cars. And so with this, uh, we can then uh, come up with this design using what we call the finite state machine. Finite state machine you know, comes from the fact that uh, we do have a limit, uh, you know, a finite number of states as we you know, show earlier. So what we have here is um, we have circles and you know, uh, arrows um, and some labels on top of the arrows. You probably see, uh, you know, such state machine before in different classes, maybe logic design, um, but let's go over this uh, because it's particularly useful uh, in our um, cyber physical system design. And uh, also, you know, in our lab one, we're gonna be using 
uh, state machines like this. Not necessarily the exact the same, uh, but we're gonna be learning some important concept using this example, state machine. So we have uh, states and we use uh, the circles to indicate these states and we label them uh, from zero, one, two, up to M to indicate the, uh, the states. And we have these uh, arrows um, from one state to another state. And those are the possible transitions from one state to another state uh, if certain condition holds. Um, we have uh, on top of the curve uh, arrows uh, or some you know, labels, we, we, we call them predicates. Um, we call them predicates. Uh, what we uh, you know doing here is um, we are specifying a guard and then an action. So for guard, um, this is a um, boolean type of um, expression, and this this guard is to help us specify. Uh, what will be the condition that uh, this uh, transition will take place? Uh, for example, the first one is up. Uh, this um, upper arrow here, this is the end operator. And this, um, you know, small, um, uh, you know, uh, symbol here is the uh, not um, um, logic. And down is the other um, signal we used earlier. Remember the up uh, takes two possible values, absent and present. Uh, similarly down takes two possible values, absent and present. Um, so this up, upper arrow and you know, small dash line down, this means that uh, the condition will be true when the input up is present and input down is absent. Okay. Um, you know, you can look at other places, they, you know, they have similar um, representations, um, you know, especially the top ones are all the same, uh, the bottom ones are the same, but they are, you know, different uh, top ones and bottom ones are different. So this is, you know, the, we call it predicate. And we will, the, the state machine will evaluate if this is true, uh, we'll then um, move uh, from one state to another state, we call it state transitions. And this uh, four slash uh, followed by a number. And this four slash is to separate the predicates with the action. And this action is the output action. Uh, what we're saying here is, uh, if this condition is true, so there's uh, up um, signal present and down signal not present, we will output one. Okay. And uh, similarly, uh, if you are at state one and you see a uh, up signal present and down signal absent, then we'll transit to the state number two and output this number two. So th these numbers, one, two, three, and M, they're gonna be um, sent over to the output on the output pin or output signal of the uh, counter actor. Okay. And likewise, if we see this down signal present and up signal absent, then we're gonna be transitioning from these states back to uh, the original state. Okay, and next thing uh, we don't want to miss here is we still have one uh, arrow uh, that has no labels and there's no um, you know, starting point of another state. So this is the initial state, uh, which was saying that the initial state is this state zero. Okay. Um, one thing I have to say is 
Um, there's also um, default transitions, um, which is not shown in the state diagram. So let's say if um, we're at state zero, and of course, because we have such a um, transition defined here, the predicate is uh, up present and down absent. In that case, we're going to be transitioning to um, we're going to be transitioning to uh, state number one. But if uh, there's um, if this predicate does not hold, so I'll give you an example. Um, up is uh, absent, down is absent. So this is not true. Um, so in this case, it will stay at its current state. Okay. Um, so if we have such a finite state machine, do you think this state machine can solve the problem we just identified uh, where the counters may go to negative? Uh, I guess no. Uh, are you uh, saying it, it cannot solve the problem, or it 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 will not uh, I guess, solve the problem? I guess it cannot solve the problem. Uh, instead of starting with zero, if we start with the number of cars that are already inside the garage, then that might be uh, like that might be more uh, like foolproof kind. Of, you know? Mm. Now, because the initial state is zero, so uh, we assume that uh, the car, the garage is empty, um, and oh, that's how we run start this um, same machine. So, if that's the case, will this solve the problem? Okay. Yes, I take that as a yes. Okay, so I'll leave it just to you and you can think about it uh, more. Um, okay, so I introduced the initial state. Uh, we uh, talked about the output, which is you know after this uh, forward slash. And again, you can use uh, this modeling software to um, examine these um, um, designs. And as you see here in this case, uh, there's no um, numbers uh, go negative. So we indeed uh, use this can solve that problem. Okay, we saw the example of this uh, finite state machine and we introduced uh, in this diagram how you use uh, the circles, arrows and uh, labels to um, describe this state machine. This uh, type of um, drawing or diagram of state machine is called graphical um, notation of a state machine, a finite state machine. Um, these are useful, are very intuitive, um, but you know, in some other cases, we want to uh, formally uh, describe these transitions, these states, uh, and we're gonna be using uh, something like this. So to describe such a finite state machine, we're gonna uh, need to specify the states. So in this case, uh, we have these n plus one states. When you define the inputs, uh, those are uh, two pure signals up and down. Uh, they can be either absent or present, uh, respectively. Uh, um, and we'll also have uh, outputs and that's the uh, output from the counteractor, and its possible value will be absent uh, or an integer number, indicating the number of cars in the garage. And then we have a um, update uh, function or transition function, and these will be a mapping from uh, the uh, number of states times the number of inputs, these many combinations and to the states and the output um, range. Uh, also, we need to specify the initial state.
So in general, we will um, describe a finite state machine uh, using um, the, you know, by describing the inputs and outputs, uh, and also the uh, states. Um, in here, uh, this is a more generic example. We have a couple of states, and we have a uh, initial state indicator. This is the uh, uh, arrow going into a state, and also this arrow does not have a source state. And on the labels, we have this guard and action. Uh, so in the previous, previous example, we talked about the output action. Uh, in addition to output action, we may have other op actions uh, that we'll discuss later. But the guard is the predicates, the Boolean expressions, which we can check uh, if it's true, uh, this transition will be taken and this uh, action will be taken uh, on the output signal. And we have transitions like this. And we have also self loops. Self loops is, um, of course, you, know, you can see that it's going back to the self. Um, so it, uh, um, the state does not change, but doesn't mean that you, you may or, uh, or may not um, output a different value. So you can still do outputs and also you can still have a um, guard to describe this uh, condition to do self loop. Uh, for pure signals, uh, that means the signals take values uh, absent or present. Um, the guards for these signals can be the following. Um, for example, it can be true, uh, which means that, you know, we don't have to check anything about these signals. This transition will be turned anyway. Um, and then the other one, P1, uh, if let's say P is a pure signal, uh, the transition is enabled if uh, the P1 is present. So the condition, if you have such P1 symbol in your predicate as the guard, then whenever this P1 is present, uh, this uh, symbol is going to be true. And of course, you can uh, use symbol, like uh, um, combine the symbol with other symbols like in this example. Uh, but just looking at the symbol itself, this will be true if P1 uh, is present. And the, on the other hand, this not P1, meaning that the transition uh, is enabled. So this is not uh, true. If, if P1 is absent, this is gonna be true. And this P1 and P2, meaning that if both of them are present, uh, this will be true, so transition will be enabled. Uh, this is what we saw earlier. Uh, if P1 is present and P2 is absent, then this transition is enabled. If the signals are not pure signal, which means that they take values, uh, and um, in this case, uh, with the numerical values, we will um, also um, you know, check them differently. Um, this P3, um, let's say P3 is a um, signal with numerical value. Uh, if we put this as the guard, that is to say, if P3 is present or not absent, uh, this is gonna be true. So the transition is taken. And um, if you have an uh, expression like this, P3 equals to one. Uh, this is to say that uh, we will check if P3 is present and its value is one. That's the case when uh, the transition it will be enabled. We can also do a range comparison um, for the value if the value is greater than five. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's look at this uh, example here. Um, uh, 
we have a uh, thermostat. A thermostat, you know, you, you probably have it at your home or apartment. Uh, of course, we use it to control the temperature of the room. Um, and in this case, uh, we have, um, you know, in this finite state machine, we have two states. Uh, can you tell me which one is the initial state? Uh, cooling. Sure. Cooling is the initial state. And we have uh, certain transitions. And, and looks like we have one input um, and that's going to be the temperature. So can you tell me whether temperature, this input is a pure signal or is a signal with numerical value? A signal with numerical value. Good. And also, can we see what, what is the output uh, from this finite state machine? Uh, cooling or heating. Mm, try again. So we said earlier, cooling and heating, uh, those are in the two circles, so those two are states. So my question was, uh, what is the output? Well, output is signal. it heat? heat? That's right. Heat is the um, output signal. You can think about this heat is the, you know, the, the uh, switch to turn on the heater. Um, so that's the output. Uh, the, re the reason I know that is because look at how I represent the guard and uh, action. And heat here is the output action. Um, so let's say, uh, let's say we, you know, start the steam machine, we go into the, the first state cooling and, um, let's say we set the temperature as 20. So that's my goal. And, but the current temperature is, uh, 17. So what will happen? Uh, it will heat. So that's right. So it will heat uh, because temperature 17 will you know, cause this guard, this predicate uh, is true. Uh, so we're going to take this transition uh, going into the heating uh, state. Also, because we we'll take this transition, so we're going to output this heat, this control signal, so that the uh, heating system is turned on to do the heating. Uh, so the, when it heats, the temperature gradually goes up. Let's say now it's 18. Uh, what will happen? Heat. Okay. Uh, how do you know that? Because it specifies, uh, it's going, that is going towards the heat because it's less than or equal to 18. Uh, but if it's greater than 18, it will be going to the cooling state, right? Well, your answer was correct in the first part. It's going to heat, but it's not because the temperature is less than 18. Because now we are already in a heating state. So we're going to be, um, you know, starting from here now uh, and look at the um, next T. Uh, the temperature is 18, and that makes uh, this predicate to be true. So this transition is taken. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this transition is taken, and the output is, sorry, the action is the output uh, heat. So the, this heating signal is still uh, keep the heater on, so your temperature is going to be um, going up. Okay. Um, same thing you know, again when the temperature is 19 and 20, 21, 22. What will happen if now the temperature is 22? Cool. Because? Temperature 
greater than or equal to 22 will take the next state. So we're going to take, you're right, so we're going to take this transition because temperature is now 22, okay? Um, does that mean the system is going to cool down um, by turning the cooler somehow? No. Uh, it will just shut down. That's right. So it's going to, you know, basically the output here is no, uh, nothing, right? So your heating system will be shutting down because there's no heat uh, or heat on this, um, this control signal as an output. So you're going to be transitioning to this cooling state and without, you know, keeping the heater on. Let's say now we are at, you know, 20, um, so we were at 22. So now because your heater is off, so the temperature goes down a little bit, so 21. So what will happen when the temperature is 21 when you add cooling? Uh, nothing will happen. Um, you're right. So it's a uh, kind of a self loop, but because your temperature is still greater than 18, so it's going to stay here. Okay. All right. So um, it's a simple state machine, but you can see it's, uh, it can be tricky when you really look at it to see how uh, the state changes and how the uh, control signals are being output. 